Welcome back to our Intermediate Financial Accounting class. Over the last couple of segments, we've been talking about investments. Investments in stocks and bonds and the way we account for them. When we left that last segment, I gave you an assignment and that was to go ahead and do the necessary journal entry to account for the change in fair value at the end of year three. And hopefully you ended up with something that looks like this. The total adjustment was $20,250. Why? Because we want to end up with $18,250 as a debit in our fair value adjustment account. We had a credit of $2,000, so to get all the way over to a debit of $18,250, we had to clear away the credit balance and then add in that $18,250. So there's our adjustment. Now, hopefully you didn't have any trouble with this, but if you did, it might be because of the most common mistake. And that is that people want to take this difference between fair value and historical cost and make that the journal entry and you can't do that. That's not what we're finding with that calculation. What we're finding there is what has to be in the ending balance of our fair value adjustment account. And the journal entry gets us from ending balance last year to the new ending balance this year. So I don't know if that helps or not, but hopefully if you had any issues with the calculation, that covered it. The next thing we need to talk about is what happens when we sell them off. And that's what we're going to do in our next example. On March 14th, they decided they were going to sell all of their investment in TCV because it had finally jumped up. If you remember all of our other calculations, we would paid $2 for it and TCV had been well below that $2, even with our big portfolio adjustment at the end of year three. So now that it's finally gone above the $2 per share, we're going to sell it quick so that we're not in the hole again on this, this security. So we're going to sell these off. And to do that, we're going to start by figuring out how much money we're going to get and it's going to be 15750 Now, I will mention here too, we talked about it just briefly, but when we figure out the cash that we're going to get from our sale, there's usually two pieces. There's the actual market value of the stock, and then from that we have to subtract the brokerage fees. Now, we're not worrying about brokerage fees here, but just be aware I would take whatever cash I'm getting from the securities minus what my broker is going to take off the top and that's the actual cash that's coming in. The other thing I need to know is what I originally paid for these securities. So I originally bought these 7,000 shares. This is now historical cost at $2 a share. So it's 14,000. Let's take a look at the, the journal entries. Let's start with our short term investments. So we are getting cash of $15,750. We will credit our cash equivalents for the original $14,000 and we'll credit a gain on sale for the difference, so $1750. And this will be the sale of our investment in TCV. On the flip side, for the long-term investment, the entry is almost identical. The only difference is that instead of taking it out of the cash equivalents account, we'll take it out of our expansion fund account. So debit cash, 15 750 credit gain on sale 1750 and now expansion fund sale of investment Since I'm not revaluing the portfolio at the end of the period, I don't even use my fair value adjustment account, so I'm not going to make any changes there. What I am going to change is this asset account. The historical cost now has changed because the stock I have left only cost me $50,000. Now, to wrap up this example and finish things off, we need to look at what does happen at the end of this next year. At the end of December, of year four. TCV, we don't 
own any of it, so we don't even care what its market value is. But XYZ is now selling at six fifty a share. And since I have no other stocks or bonds or anything else in that portfolio, that's what that portfolio is worth. So that's my fair value or market value, if you prefer to call it that. The historical cost is now this number. So I want to end up with 15,000 in my fair value account. To get from 18,000 to 50 to 15,000, I need to reduce the account by this much. Which means we need a journal entry with a credit to fair value adjustment expansion fund. There's our 3250 and we'll have a new unrealized loss for the same amount. And this will be an adjusting entry for the change in market value. We focused so far on equity securities. We need to take a look at what's different when we're dealing with debt securities. And there is a little bit of a difference, primarily because we've got some interest coming in from these bonds or other investments that we have that are making payments as debt securities. So if we've had a premium or a discount, we've got to be amortizing that away. So there are some differences in the way we handle securities when they are debt. That's coming up next time. I'll see you then.